Acts 28 and verse number 1, And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita, and the barbarous people showed us no little kindness. For they kindled a fire and received us every one because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom, though he had escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. And verse number 5 says, And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Howbeit they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said he was a god. The verse I want to look at is verse number 5. He shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Now, what I'd like to preach to you just for a few minutes is you need to learn how to shake it off. You just need to learn how to shake it off. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for the Bible. I pray, Lord, you'd help us. God, as we look into some of these verses and see what you might have for us, and I pray that you'd help now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, the Apostle Paul, and he was a prisoner. He was in prisoner. He's headed to uh, Rome. And uh, they had a, they went shipwreck in chapter 27. And uh, what they were doing, they were making it to land and uh, trying to get there. There was a great storm that came. It messed up the whole ship. Everybody had to jump in the sea, and they're swimming into land. And now everybody's cold. Everybody's hungry. And everybody have any heat. They uh, were cold because of the rain. And they needed to start a fire. And you can't cook without a fire. You can't get warm without a fire. And so you're miserable when you're cold. Uh, you feel a whole lot better when you get warm. You get comfortable, and, and then you get sleepy. And then you start drifting off. Boy, when you get warm and comfortable, you just feel like you can just drift off and go to sleep. But boy, when you're cold, you're just miserable, and you're just shaking like this, and you're just freezing to death, and you've got to have a fire to get warm. And I'm going to tell you, that's the way church is. Sometimes churches get cold. They get cold and indifferent and you, and you, you feel miserable and you, you hear the preaching and you just sit there and you're shivering. I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about spiritually. Just cold and indifferent. That's what Jesus said to one of the churches over in Revelation chapter number 3. Said they were cold and naked and blind and, and, and they needed a fire. Let me say this. Holy Hills Baptist Church, we need to stir up a fire. We need to build a fire because there's people that need to be warm. There's people that need fed and you can't feed people without a fire. You can't keep people warm without a fire. And church, we need to start a fire around here. Now I say that carefully because we've had a, a, a fire or two in our day and we don't want to go through a physical fire, but I'm talking about a spiritual fire. I'm going to tell you. Now when our church did burn uh, over on Reynolds Avenue, it is true what they say. If you start a fire, everybody's going to come watch it burn. Right. Son, we had half the church up there just sitting there watching, watching the fire. And I'm telling you, you say, Preacher, how are we going to fill some of these empty seats up? I'm telling you, you're going to have to start a fire. We're going to have to start a fire. It's going to have to start back here. It's going to have to go plumb all the way to the back into the classrooms, up in the sound booth. Somebody's going to have to start a fire. People need to be fed. People need to be uh, warm. And when they started this fire, uh, these uh, verse number two, the barbarous people uh, showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us, everyone, because of the present rain and because of the cold. Now, the church needs to be on fire. They need to be real fire, not uh, just wildfire, but it needs to be real fire. 
And uh, when that happens, you start a fire. And amen, now listen to me. When you start a fire, and this church gets on fire for the Lord, the snakes are going to come out. Now, as long as it's cold and long as it's raining, snakes are going to stay in hibernation. In the winter months, them snakes, you don't see no snakes. You start a fire, here they'll come. Woo! It was going to be fun tonight. Hallelujah. And uh, look here, verse number three. Paul is a prisoner. Look here, Paul's a prisoner. Paul is a prisoner. And these guys running the ship, they're out there picking up sticks. They're trying to build a fire. Watch this. Watch what the apostle Paul does. And when Paul, verse three, had gathered a bundle of sticks, looks like Paul's a worker. Paul's not a lazy church member. He's a worker. He's not standing around waiting somebody else to do it. He says, hey, I'm a prisoner. I ain't even supposed to be doing this, but I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to jump in and help y'all gather some sticks up. I don't want to sit. Come on now, help me. I don't want to sit around here and just be lazy and just watch everybody else do it. I want to get up and big up some sticks. I'm going to help y'all. Even though y'all got me as a prisoner, I want to help y'all. I want to do the work. I want to get in the work. I'm cold too. I need a fire. I'm hungry too. I need some food. And so because I'm going to receive, I'm going to help. I ain't going to just sit around and watch everybody else do it. Amen. You say, preacher, you're repeating yourself. I'm doing it on purpose. Amen. Repetition is the key to learning. <laughs> Hallelujah. So Paul, he said, well, I'm not going to sit around here and watch everybody else work. I'm going to get in on this thing. I, uh, I'm a worker. And uh, he picked up the sticks and laid them on the fire. Now, what Paul's trying to do, he's trying to stoke the fire. Y'all know what stoking the fire is. And some of y'all, hey, when the fire, when, when, when the spark, somebody, throw a stick on. Get you some lighter fluid. Somebody help. I mean, let's get this thing going. Don't just sit there and just watch. Well, where's dinner at? Won't y'all hurry up? Won't you get in there and help? Won't you get in there and stoke the fire? Won't you put a stick on? Why don't you do something? Why don't you work in the nursery? Why don't you help us in the, in the, in the Sunday school classes? Why don't you help us in the Wednesday night classes? Why don't you help us in children's church? Why don't you? Hallelujah. Come on now. See, I can't do this kind of stuff on Sunday morning. <laughs> we knew we wouldn't. I'd run everybody off. <laughs> and some of you are sitting there thinking, you're about to run me off. And hey, we need to stoke the fire. Put some fire, gather it up, put it on. You see a fire start over here, people get, get, start getting excited. Hey, and let me just pause and say this one right here. Let me just pause and say this one right here. Them kids come back, I hope they're on fire. I hope they're on fire. I hope they're on fire. And if they do, and if they are, Lord God, help us uh, if we throw a wet blanket on it. Them big kids come back, and they might, just, they might just get brave enough. One service that we have, slip a hand up. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And what you need to do is stoke the fire. You say, how you stoke the fire? If you see one of them going like this, hallelujah, then you say, amen, hallelujah. Amen. Come on, son, that's good. Amen. And if you date a boy that don't know how to shout and don't know how to say amen, break up with him and get you one that does. Amen. Well, anyway, <clears throat> Paul gathered a bundle of sticks, laid them on the fire. There came a viper out of the heat. Boy, I'm telling you, you start a fire, here they'll come. Amen. You start putting some, uh, uh, let me give you some points here. I got some points. This ain't a pointless message. When you start a fire, Snakes are going to stir. Now, snakes will lay dormant until the fire starts. 
Everything's going to be nice. That's why some of these churches are big. Uh, uh, hey, can I help you? And I know some of you, y'all yo, yo like some of them big TV preachers and they got like 20,000 sitting in there. You know why they got 20,000? Because if you don't, if everything's just nice and cozy, uh, them snakes will stay dormant. But nobody wants to start a fire. You're not going to hear 20,000 church, member church and, and preach with some fire and some unction on it. And I'm talking about call sin, sin, and stir a fire up and t still 20,000 people show up on a Sunday morning. You stir a fire up, snakes are going to come out. And I'm telling you, you better get ready for it because they're going to lay dormant until the fire starts. They'll be distant until the fire starts. And then when the star, fire starts, they're going to be defensive. <laughs> Snakes like every, they like everything happy, happy and nice and easy going. Preacher, won't you just preach on salvation all the time? Won't you just talk about, boy, I'm telling you, on my mama's side and on my father's side. Boy, that makes me feel all warm and fuzzy. And boy, I just love it. I just wish you'd preach it every Sunday. Make me feel warm and fuzzy. Oh, no, friend. We got to stoke the fire every now and then. Amen. And when that happens, them snakes going to come out. You say, what does them snakes do? Them snakes, what they do, watch. What them snakes do, this is what they do. Uh, when the, uh, let's see, where was the first uh, three? When Paul gathered bundles of sticks, laid them on the fire, uh, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. Them snakes, the way they hurt you, the way them snakes hurt you, they use their mouth. Let me say that point again. Them snakes, they got poison coming from their mouth. Woo! Ain't we having fun at the hills tonight? Now when the fire starts, them snakes come out, and when them snakes come out, they got that mouth wide open looking for something to strike. Well, I'm getting full again. My cup's getting full. Hey, and them snakes, they'll use their, their, their mouths to do that. When the fire starts, the snakes get stirred. They'll lay dormant, they'll lay distant, but they're going to get defensive. And they use their mouth, uh, and you got to be careful. You got to be real careful, church folks. Now I'm doing this as a as a as a preventative maintenance. I it, some people think when I preach stuff, they like, oh, something must be going on. Far as I know, ain't nothing going on. I'm just doing this as preventative maintenance. Uh, before, but but I'm I'm hoping to start a fire. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get one going tonight. I tried to get one going this morning. I mean, listen, our church, we need to be on fire. We, listen, we got the truth. We're standing on the truth. We need to stir the fire, put another stick on it, stoke the fire, put some gasoline on it. Hallelujah. Over at James chapter 3, you don't have to turn there, but I can tell you what it says. Uh, this is what he says. Behold, we put bits in horses' mouths, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Your whole body uh, uh, can be controlled by one little member. Then it gives us another example. It gives us three examples. One example was putting bits in horses' mouths. You pull back on them reins, and it, pull, you, I mean, you turn them in the direction you want to. It controls the whole body. Then example number two, verse four, Behold, also the ships, which though they be so great, are driven of a fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small hem. Whithersoever the governor, listen, you know what? The captain, if the captain is not in control of the hem, he's out of control of the ship. And so you need the captain to be con in control of the hymn. Amen. So the whole ship yeah. is controlled by him instead of the hymn. Right. Right. Yeah. 
Verse 5 says, Even so the tongue is a little member and boasts us great things. Behold, how great a matter. A little fire kindleth. Look at that. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members. And it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature and is set on fire of the fire of hell. Look at that, look at that. For every kind of beast of the birds and serpents and things of the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Well, if I'd have told you what I was preaching on tonight, boy, we wouldn't have had this men here. But I can tell you what, Psalm 119, if you keep coming on Wednesday night, we're going to get to it, about 165, uh, about verse 165. Uh, uh, they that love thy law, law and nothing shall offend them. So if you love that Bible, it's hard to offend you. If you're easily offended, you probably don't love the Bible. Woo, hallelujah. Well, uh, the old man, uh, there was a man that told, uh, told lies. He told lies all over town about the preacher. And uh, he told, I mean, he told, boy, I'm telling you, he told him years, told all kind of stuff about the preacher. And finally, in a revival service, that man had been telling all that stuff about the preacher, he got convicted about it. He got down here at the altar, and boy, he, he, I'm telling you, he, uh, uh, he got right. I mean, he cried, he more remorseful, he, conviction was all over him. And then finally, after service, he preached, I want to tell you, I'm sorry, I got all that right. And I'm telling you, I want you to forgive me. I asked God to forgive me, and I want you to forgive me, and I, I want you to. And uh, he called the man over to his house. He said, man, he said, brother, I appreciate it. He said, I forgive you. I forgive you. But he said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to take this old feather pillow I got, and I want you to cut this feather pillow. And the wind's blowing on a, on a March spring day. That wind was blowing real good. He's on the, his preacher lived on the second, third, fourth story of an apartment building. And uh, he said, I want you to cut this old feather pillow. Open them windows right there and just start throwing them, them feathers out. That wind called them, man, they took them feathers all over the place. And he said, he said, if you're really, if you really want to make it up to me, he said, I forgive you, I forgive you, but if you really want to make it up to me, I wish you'd go out there and pick up all them feathers. And the man said, I can't do that. He said, neither can you fix all the lies you done told about because you don't know where all them things went. Amen. Oh, you've got to watch out them snakes. Man, they'll come out there and they got that mouth wide open. Hey, y'all help me now. It's a Sunday night. And I'm telling you, that, that fire gets started. The church gets going real good. We get built. I mean, no seats, no seats, no seats anywhere. And all of a sudden... Snake. <clears throat> and then all of a sudden you start seeing snake, seats, empty seats. And then the fire starts going down. And it's time to stoke the fire, folks. It's time to get the fire going. And give, I'm just giving you a little warning when we do, and you start seeing the seats full up again. I'm telling you, you watch them. Here they come. You got to watch. You got to be real, real careful how you use that little member. I'll give you, I'll give you, uh, 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 I'll give you an uh, example. I heard of a story. But I mean, help me, help me tremendously. There was a, 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 a fella, businessman, nice dressed businessman sitting on the train. He was going somewhere. And, uh, and, a, and a lady uh, got on uh, with her children. Had about three children. They got on that train. And they're sitting there, and the businessman's in there. He's trying to read a book. And them kids, them kids running up and down that train aisle, and they was, I mean, just wreaking havoc all over the place. And people's looking around, trying to find out where mama is, daddy is, somebody. And they're trying to figure out, and them kids running everywhere. And, uh, and finally, after about 30 minutes, that businessman said, it's, I've had all this. I'm, I'm going to go out there and give, give that mama a piece of my mind. She ought to have better control of kids. Ain't nobody in the right mind going to have the kids just run everywhere like this. It's pitiful. 
she, he walked back there, and the, and the woman just, just looked like she's staring off into space, didn't have half know where she's at. He sat down beside her and said, excuse me, ma'am. And I'm talking about he commenced to giving her, I mean, one piece of his mind. I'm talking about he chewed that woman upside one down the other, told her how to raise her kids, how they were to whoop every one of them. And I'm for whooping them. But anyway, I, I, mean, just, I mean, here we go. And from a dead stare, she looked up. She said, sir, I'm sorry. She said, we're coming home from my husband's funeral. These kids have lost their daddy. I don't know how we're going to make it another day. I apologize. I wouldn't watch them. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry if they offended you. I'm sorry if I, I just didn't have my mind. I was thinking about how we're going to make it another day. I lost my husband. They lost their daddy. The man felt. Because what happened, he come out and went. And what she did was shook it off. This is what he did. Hey, I got to hurry. I thought this was a shorter sermon than this. But look here in verse number five. Or, yeah, verse number five. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I got to hit four. I got to hit four. And when the barbarian saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt. Oh, here they go to talking. Boy, they done got on the phone. No doubt. You know that man, that man. Look, you see that snake on him? That, that guy's done something bad. That, that guy right there is a murderer. That Paul, and he was. Or had been. <laughs> oh, that guy. I, you know, and there ain't no way. There ain't no way he's going he to be dead in like three minutes. And they sat there and chewed on him for about, uh, about, about, uh, about three minutes. No doubt this man of murder, whom though he had escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. Verse 5, and he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. You know what the apostle Paul did? That snake come out of fire, got started. Paul was helping. He's in there working in the church. I'm talking about he's really helping, throwing another stick on it. He's trying to stoke it. He's trying to put fire or, or, or gasoline on it and he, anything he can, brush, anything, get that fire going. And all of a sudden the snake come out, opened his mouth, tried to put his poison in his hand, and Paul said, get off of me. Some of you, get off of me. Devil starts bothering you anymore. Get off. Get off of me. Now, this is a whole lot better sermon than what you give me credit for, but I'm telling you, some of you need to learn in the morning when you wake up and you're down and depressed, shake it off. Shake it off. You wonder, you wonder why I do I'm shaking it off. You got to shake it off. I mean, you, you get disturbed about everything. Paul knew that God had a plan and a purpose for his life. God knew, uh, or, or Paul knew that God wasn't through with him. Paul shook it off. He shook off that depression. He shook off that despair. He shook off that temptation. Don't quit. Shake it off. He felt no harm. Well, let me give you my outline because I still ain't got to that yet. But when you start a fire, Satan's going to stir. Them snakes are going to stir. And when you start a fire, servants will be struck. Folks, members, let me tell you, the ones that do all the work around here, you're, but you're, the, you're the ones, the very likely ones, that'll get struck first. If you're way back off from the fire, you're probably not going to get bit. And what happens in a lot of churches, people have been bit before. And now they won't get close to the fire no more because they don't want to get bit no more. And now they stay off in the background and just watch it. They let everybody else do something. I done been bit. How many times you knocked on the door and people said, and people, we've heard this. I've been to church for, I'm tell you, I ain't, I've done been, tried that, done it. I ain't going, I'm telling you, that, that preacher, that person, that Sunday school, that song leader, whatever, that piano player, you know, hey, I understand. But anyway, uh, at, uh I just ain't, I'm telling you, I done done that. I might come, and I, I, I but I, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't getting, I'm, I ain't getting close. But the ones that's real close up here, 
throwing the wood on, putting the gas on. When the snake comes out, he's going to get you first. I'm just warning you. He'll get the ones that's working. So the ones that the more you get involved, the higher the chances are you're going to get bit. So get involved, stoke the fire, lay on the wood, and when it does happen, shake it off. Because when the snake comes out, he's trying to get you away from the fire. He's trying to get you to pour some water on it. He's trying to get you to quit. He's trying to get you to stop doing what you used to do. He's trying to get you to stop reading your Bible. He's trying to get you to stop praying. He's trying to get you to, amen. He's trying to get you to stop doing whatever you're doing for the Lord. He's trying to get you to quit. Don't quit. Shake it off. And the servants are going to get struck. But I got to hurry. Because I don't, I don't think y'all liking this too well. But look at verse number six. How be it? They looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. You know what Paul didn't do? When the snake bit him, he didn't swell up. Y'all didn't see that coming, did you? <laughs> hey, when that snake bit him, he didn't swell. Right. Hey, when the fire starts, snakes are going to stir. When the fire starts, servants are going to get struck. When the, when, the, when the fire starts, it's going to be subdued swelling. Yeah. You hear people, when they, when they get bit, they start swelling up like old toad frog. <laughs> they hurt my feelings. I want everybody to know it. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to quit paying my tithes. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show them. I'm going to show them. Tell you what, that'll teach them. They better not hurt me no more. They ought, I'm going to show them. I'm important around here. They can't do, they can't do this without me. I mean, I... <laughs> They done start swelling. <laughs> Paul, Paul didn't swell. No pride. You know what Paul did? Now let me just give you, here's, here's a sermon real quick. Paul, you start the fire in the church. Snakes are going to come out. And when they do, they're going to bite the one that's doing a lot of the work. The ones that's doing a lot of the work that's closest to the fire. You with me? Now, we need all kinds. We need all kinds. We need some getting ready. We need some over here chopping wood to hand to the person that's clothed to put on the fire. We need some going to get some gasoline when we have a, when we have a dry day and we need something to get started and, and, and we had some rain and it's cold and we had a, what, just a bad service. We need somebody got some gasoline on. Get them a song that's going to get something stirred up and throw the fire and throw the uh, gasoline on it. Amen. And those out in the seat, you need... Hey man, get it going. <laughs> There's going to be subdued swelling. There's going, not going to be surprise. Not be surprised. Why? Because people are watching. Them barbell, they's watching Paul. See how he's going to react. The world's, they watching. They watching, see how y'all going to react. They watching to see if you're going to swell up. They watching if you see if you're going to slip up and say something ugly. Now, hey, I'm not just, I'm saying we all do that. Hey Amen. I have trust, man, I'm telling you, driving down that road, boy, listen, I'm for, I am for no speed limits, no driver's license, every man for himself. <laughs> now, I just said that with Brother Phil in here, and he's sitting there writing something down. I just don't know. I have trouble too. And people are watching. They're watching to see what happens when something, they're watching to see. I wonder what I wonder if he's going to respond to that. I wonder how he's going to do it. Hey, they're watching. It could hurt your testimony. It could hurt your joy. And look, and I'm done. I'm done. Look what they said. They changed their minds at the end of verse 6. They changed their minds and said, oh, oh, he, he must be a God. They started praising him. Watch this, folks. I had an old preacher tell me one time. An old preacher told me this one time. 
And listen, don't, don't read any, anything in here that, that ain't supposed to be there, but I'm telling you, this is what he told me as a young preacher. He said, don't listen to them when they're cussing you and don't listen to them when they're praising you. He said, you don't listen to them. Shake it off when they're cussing you and you shake it off when they're praising you. Because the cussing or the praising will do you as much damage as the cussing will. Yeah. Right. When they praise you all the time, you start to swell up like you've been bit. Don't let that snake just sneak up behind you and start praising you, cause you to swell up. Here's a, here's a message. Don't quit. Hey, if a snake's come out, and they're going to, and the ones that's going to get the ones that's closest doing the work, hey, when he comes, shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off in the fire. And you know what Paul did? This is the amazing thing. Paul shook it off and commenced and went on back to working. He didn't let it get him out. He didn't let it bother him. He shook it off in the fire and kept on. Where's another stick at? Paul, you mean you ain't, you mean you ain't gonna take three, three, four days off because you got bit? I got bit. I ain't gonna let the devil know he bit me. Y'all let the devil know too much. Oh, devil, boy, you really got me today. Don't tell him that. Make him, I'm talking about saying amazing grace, how sweet the sound, and make the devil think he got somebody else beside you. He confused and lost his mind, and he got somebody else beside you because he no, no way he could have got you because if he'd have got you, you'd have done fell out, quit, gone, no more fire, no more wood getting. But I mean, every time he snaps at you, son, here you go. You bite right back at it. Amen. Hey, the more truth this church stands on, the more truth that we stand on, the more fire that's going to get started and the more snakes that will come out. And when they do, and when they bite, whether it be from outside or from the inside, wherever they bite, shake it off. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, tonight. I don't know. I hope, I hope that helped somebody. Lord, I don't know. There's people going. I, I know, I know people sitting in this room right now going through things. They've been bit. Lord, I pray something's been said tonight that'll help them shake that thing off. Get it off of them. Shake it off and put it in the fire where it belongs. And Lord, keep on going for you and keep on pressing on the upward way. New heights we're gaining every day. Lord, I pray that you do that for us tonight. Help us in the invitation in Jesus' name. Won't you stand? If you need to come pray about something, need to come pray about something, need to come shake it off.